Hello, uh, I am uh, Rui Cardoso, Senior Lecturer for Aerospace Engineering. So uh, this face you are seeing there is my face <laughs> and I'm going to um, um, introduce you to statics. So I'm going to, to show you some sample lectures and tutorials on uh, statics. So if you want for some reason to email me uh, with any query, you have my email address here. And uh, you also have these uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, things for Brunel, which you can try to follow. Um, so what I'm going to cover in these uh, sample lectures and tutorials is basically material for uh, your year one at Brunel. So I'm going to cover statics only. Of course, you are going to do many other things, but the main main topics I would like you to to focus is basically the, the first three vector analysis I'm going to give a very quick review of vector analysis with the basics and then I'm going to move to equilibrium of a particle where a lot of vector analysis is required and then I will introduce moment produced by a force vector so these are quite basic and but extremely important concepts that you need to know very well for uh, the remaining of your lectures. Uh, then I will move to uh, the equilibrium, uh, sorry, equivalent system force moment, where you will learn how to basically build an equivalent system that is uh, in the same equilibrium conditions as the original system. That will be very important for the topic that follows, which is equilibrium of rigid bodies, uh, which is the main, uh, the main uh, topic in statics. We, we, will study, okay, we will study many different types of supports. The, the bodies or the, the, the rigid bodies, they need to have supports. They cannot be levitating in the air. Uh, and then we are going to learn how to replace those supports with uh, forces, which are called reactions. And we are going to learn how to derive the equilibrium equations. Uh, basically, these equilibrium equations will, will um, make sure that your body is in, is in equilibrium. And then from those equilibrium equations, you can calculate many different unknowns. Uh, then we will talk a little bit about beams. Uh, we will derive the transverse shear force and bending moment diagrams for beams. So this is a kind of a introductory, uh, introductory uh, video I will have for all these sample lectures. Of course, uh, different lectures will have this same introductory video, but they will refer to different topics on this table of contents, if you want. Uh, another thing you can, if you are more curious, I, I, I have a YouTube channel which you can, if you are interested of course and curious, you can try to see what I had there. So I have a, a lot of lectures in that YouTube channel so you can search for that channel by googling, googling Ricardozo YouTube. Uh, I have lectures for more advanced years uh, so I recommend at this point you not to see those lectures. But um, uh, I also have some supporting material for uh, statics in year one there in YouTube channel. So I think it's a, it's a nice thing for you to, to see as well. I would like also to say that all the examples I will be doing in these lectures and tutorials, uh, not all of them, but uh, many of them were taken from these recommended books I have listed here in this slide. So engineering mechanics statics from Ebler or from vector mechanics for engineers statics from Beer and Johnson uh, from engineering mechanics statics from Marion Bolton and Craig and also from my own book stress analysis for lightweight structures a MATLAB oriented approach so all the examples you will see in the videos sometimes I refer which book I've taken the example sometimes I don't but these are the books that we uh, the, uh, sorry that I, I I follow so in case I forget to mention which book I took the example you have here the list of books uh, so you you know where they came from
All right, thank you. So we will move now uh, to the specific lecture. All right, good morning. Let's start. Okay, so did you all get the video in Panopto? Anyone experience any problem with that or it's okay? Um, the, the program I have prepared for today, for these two hours today in the morning, is we are going to do two examples uh, for the equilibrium of a particle. So this is going to be the first one, and then we are going to do this, this other example in 3D. I want, I want to show you how you can build the force vectors in 3D. All right? So after we finish these two examples, we, we will continue the analysis we have been doing last week on the uh, moment produced by a couple. And we will introduce the equivalent system force moment, which is a very important concept uh, that we need for the equilibrium of 3D rigid bodies, okay? So we will introduce that today in the morning as well, and we will do at least one example on the equilibrium, oh, sorry, on the equivalent system force moment, right? Uh, if we have time in the morning, we will also introduce the equilibrium of 3D rigid bodies. If not, we will continue that in the afternoon, all right? Okay, so this is the program for today. Uh, so let's start with this uh, example in two dimensions. So I took this example, again, it's, it's better to write it down here. Why is this not working? Okay, now it seems to be working now. All right, so this is a two-dimensional problem. Uh, this, this example was taken from Ebler's book. Book on statics. So I took this example from the Ebler's book. Uh, and uh, what the, uh, the question there in the book was, OK, you have this force of 100 newtons, this horizontal force at point A. Uh, and uh, also at point A, you have this mass of 20 kilograms. And the question was, what is the, this D? So this D distance or this height that you have there between point A and point C, so that the, the force in cable AC equal to zero, all right? So this was basically more or less the question that uh, was written there in Ebler's book. What is this height D so that uh, uh, the force in uh, cable AC is equal to zero, force or tension? When we're talking about cables, okay, a cable can only carry tension forces, right? You cannot carry compressive forces, right? You can all see that, right? Yes or no? Imagine a cable like this. This is a cable, right? I can only stretch a cable like this, right? If I try to apply a compressive force, look what happens to the cable, right? You cannot carry the force, right? So the cable only, only carries tensile forces or positive forces, OK? Not negative forces. Uh, so. These kind of problems are uh, typical of the equilibrium of a particle. Why? Because if I isolate, if I isolate this particle A, for example, if I write particle A here, okay? So in order to isolate, look at this. In order to isolate this particle A, what I have to do is I need to break the connections of particle A with all the other uh, members. So basically, I have, imagine like if you have a scissor, you are cutting these cables, right? In order to isolate point A, right? That's what I'm doing. So this red circle I, I just uh, represented there is like 
I am cutting the connections of point A with the uh, remaining structure, right? So, isolate point A, and then because I did cut these connections, these forces, I need to represent then now the forces at point A, all right? And the forces you have at point A are these 100 kilonewtons, uh, sorry, 100 newton force, horizontal force at point A. You have the weight of this uh, sphere, right? So is, that is going to be a vertical force of 20 kilograms times 9.81, more or less, right? The acceleration of gravity. So this is the weight, OK? And then, look, in order to isolate point A, I also had to cut these two cables. So whenever I cut a cable or a beam or a bar or a strut, whatever, I need to replace that with the internal forces, right? So because I did cut this cable, I need to represent the forces in the cable. And the force in a cable has always the direction of the cable. <coughs> Pretty simple. For example, cable AB, the force will have the direction. So let's say this is going to be my force FAB. will have the direction of cable AB. All right? <coughs> force AC. is going to have the direction of cable AC. OK? So this is the result of cutting the cable whenever I want to isolate point A. I need to cut these two cables, cable AB and cable AC. And because I'm cutting these cables, I'll need to represent the forces, internal forces on these cables, right? And then? If you look carefully, in order to isolate point A, these are all the forces I need to include, right? Uh, and then this is, uh, if you want, we can, we can say this is the free body diagram of my particle A. This is something we are going to talk a lot in the equilibrium of 3D rigid bodies the construction of the free body diagram, which is a concept <coughs> that uh, you usually ignore, because I know because I was on that side, and I ignored. But I uh, recognize that this is a really, really very important problem. Why? Because this free body diagram, as the name says, free body diagram. So free, it, it means if you want to do a diagram of particle A in this case, you need to make it free from all the connections particle A as with all the other uh, parts of the structure, OK? That's why it's called free body diagram. Yes? Why are um, FAC and FAB pointing away from A? Why point, yeah, why force FAB and FAC points away from point A? Yeah, good question. In order to answer that, I'm going to, <coughs> let me copy this. It's maybe easier. All right, so look at this. Imagine I isolate, for example, cable AB, right? So let's draw it here. So this is my cable. So this is point B. This is point A, all right? OK? I told you the forces in the cable, they need to be in tension, right? They need to have the direction of the cable. So basically, what is going to happen is the forces in, the, in this cable, force FAB, needs to be a force like this, FAB, right? Same as this, FAB, correct? And this force has the direction of the cable, right? And it needs to be a stretching force or a tension force. Now, if you look carefully at this, the force here at point A on the cable, this FAB, and if we now represent the particle A here, for example, particle A, so this force, FAB, that you have here, is basically the force that particle A is doing on the cable, right? So part basically, particle A is pulling the cable, right, with this force FAB. What is going to happen is, now, Newton's third law is action-reaction. 
uh, the cable will react on the particle by pulling the particle in the, op in the opposite direction. Okay? And this force FAB, this force here is the same as this. They are the same force, same magnitude, but they have opposite directions. All right? So this is the action reaction. It's very easy to understand. Imagine, for example, imagine I, I'm, I'm making a force on this column here to this, in this direction. So the colon will react in my hand with a force in the opposite direction. So at the end, my hand is in equilibrium, right? Two, two forces, they cancel each other. So that's exactly what is happening here. This force here is the force that particle A is doing on the cable, and then the cable will react on the particle by applying a force with the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction, OK? So uh, to answer now your question, why do we have a force FAB pointing in this direction in particle A here because this is the I'm using the positive convention because the cable can only carry a tension force right if I don't uh, draw the force FAB at, at particle A with this direction it means the force in my cable will be compressive force which is wrong my cable cannot carry compressive forces okay so that's the main reason uh, for for this uh, initial orientation. But we are going to see that we are going not to write the equilibrium equations and then we are going to solve the equilibrium equations for this and then if our initial orientation for these forces is, was not right it means we'll get the negative value at the end after solving these equations and that negative value will tell us that our initial orientation was wrong. Then we just go back and reverse the orientation, okay? But that is the main explanation why I, I, I drew these this forces with this initial orientation. There is just one more thing that is missing on this diagram for the complete free body diagram, which is a coordinate system, right? Because we are working with vectors, we need to have a coordinate system. So I can say, for example, this is going to be my coordinate system. This is a bit x, y. Okay? And this is my free body diagram of particle A. So basically, what are the steps for the construction of a free body diagram? First is, you need to choose a body that you want to do a free body diagram. So in the, our case, we choose particle A. Okay? So once you choose the body, what you need to do is you need to remove all the connections of that body with the exterior or with the other uh, components on the structure. That's what we did by isolating particle A. After that, you need to represent all the forces you have applied on particle A in this case. That's what we did here. Uh, and the next step is to attach a coordinate system, and then you have your free body diagram. Okay? So there's only one thing that we need to do now before we continue. Uh, maybe I can copy now this. I can maybe delete this now, right? OK, so we are going to work with this particle A, with this free body diagram. And what we need to have is we need to have now uh, these, sorry, these angles here. So I need to have this angle that I'm going to call alpha. And I need to have this angle here, which I'm going to call beta. Is it OK? Because I need to decompose these vectors into the x and the y directions. All right? So for example, tangent of alpha is very easy to, to get the tangent of alpha is d over 2. You all agree with me? Right? Or we can do this in a different way. <coughs> Oops. We can. So if you look here, sorry. If you look here, you have this rectangular triangle, right? Where this 
hypotenuse here is going to be equal to uh, 4 plus d square, square root of this, right? You agree with me? Pythagoras theorem, right? So I can say, for example, and I can also do this hypotenuse here. So this hypotenuse here is going to be square root of 4 plus d plus 1.5 square. You all agree with me? And now I can say, for example, if I write my equilibrium equations for a particle, which basically is, this is a 2D problem, so I will need to have summation of forces in the x direction needs to be equal to zero, and summation of forces in the y direction needs to be equal to zero, to be in equilibrium, right? This is a two-dimensional problem, so we have only the x and y axis, and then the equilibrium equations is summation of forces. So basically, if you want summation of forces in vector vectorial form equal to zero, and because these are vectors, we have the x summation of the x components, it needs to be equal to zero, and the summation of the y components also have to be equal to zero. So if I consider the x components of my forces, what do I have in the x direction? So you just need now to go to your free body diagram and check what you have in the x direction. So we can start with this 100 Newton's force, right? This is in the x direction. I can immediately put that force here, 100 Newtons. And then looking now at FAC, this one, FAC, all right? What is the x component? So basically I need to project FAC into the horizontal direction to have this component here. You all agree? All right? So this component should be positive or negative? <laughs> negative, right? So, should be minus. Minus what? FAC, very good. So FAC without, the, without this subscript, the, the, the arrow uh, above, which means this is a magnitude, intensity only, right, of FAC. But I need not to multiply FAC by what? Cosine of? Which is? How much is cosine? I'm going to write here. Cosine of alpha is equal to what? So alpha is this angle here, right? You agree? It's 2 over this square root, right? You all agree with this? This is cosine of alpha, isn't it? So I can just say, I'm, I'm going to multiply FAC by 2 over square root 4 plus d square. Right? Make sense or not? And I also have, I also have to decompose FAB. So this FAB that I have here, if I decompose in the x direction, I will get this component in the x direction, you all agree? Positive or negative? <laughs> negative. So minus, so let me just move, I need some more space. Uh, so yeah, minus FAB. <coughs> so this is a scalar FAB, magnitude of my force in cable AB. And I need to multiply now this by cos of beta, very good, which is, we can write here, cos of beta is equal to, now this, this square root here, right? Okay? Are you guys following or not? If I'm doing too fast, please. Stop me. So I'm going to multiply now this by 2 over square root of 4 plus d plus 1.5 square. 
right? Okay? Do we have any other force <laughs> component in the x direction or not? No. no. Nope. So this needs to be equal to zero to be in equilibrium, isn't it? Right? Don't forget, we started from this equilibrium equation for the components of the forces along the x direction. So we, these are all the forces we have in the x direction. So this means at the end, this summation of all these components need to be equal to zero to be in equilibrium. And we need to do the same for um, for the y direction, right? Yeah. So what do we have in the y direction? So we can start with this weight, with the weight of this sphere. Should be positive or negative? Negative. negative. So this will be minus... 20 times 9.81. So this is the weight. And now we need to have the um, vertical components of FAC and FAB. So the vertical component of FAC is going to be this one. Right? Okay? So I'm projecting now these forces in the vertical axis. This is positive or negative? Positive. positive. And equal to, so plus FAC. Now I need to uh, multiply this by sine. sine of alpha, which is D over 4 plus D squared. And I need now to decompose FAB. Right, which is this component, also positive. Okay. Uh, so also positive, so plus FAB, sine of beta, which is D plus 1.5 over Four plus. Let me move this a bit more. I also move this. Okay. Four plus the plus one point five square. Okay, and this needs to So do I have anything else in the y direction or that's all I have? That's all I have. So this also needs to be equal to zero, right? To be in equilibrium. Now so we just wrote this equilibrium equation, summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero. So basically we have, we have what? We have two equilibrium equations. And let's see how many unknowns do we have. Well, we have FAB, which is the force in cable AB, which is, we don't know yet how much it is. So this is an unknown. We have this height D, which basically is what we want to, to calculate, is this, this height here, D. But we know, we know one, one thing. We know that, okay, we want to calculate this height D so, such that this force FAC is equal to zero. So what I can do is I can replace now this force here by zero by zero, right? So this term goes away. And then we end up with we end up with so let me write the equations here. 
we end up with something like this. Summation of forces in the x direction equal to zero, so we have 100 minus FAB equal to zero, and then from the summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero, we have Right? Okay, so as you can see, we have here a system of two equations for two unknowns, which are F, A, B, and D. You just saw this is one of the equations our problem is. So, yes? As we knew that AC is zero, so it's <coughs> Sorry, sorry, can you repeat? As we knew that AC is zero, for yeah. AB, yeah. so we knew its component would be zero. Yeah. Do we need to do all that? No, I'm just doing this because uh, I. I I want to give you all the steps. But if you know that FAC is zero from the beginning, you could just ignore FAC. But the idea of this example is just to show you how to build the free body diagram, include all the forces there, and then at the end, I, I'm replacing FAC by zero, okay? But you, of course, you could, from the beginning, do not to include the force FAC is fine, all right? Okay? So, we are not going to spend time solving this system of equations, so after you're solving this system, you will get the answer for D uh, to solve this problem here. So, you can see that uh, the solution of this, well, this is a, a very simple example, but shows you that you can get this answer from the equilibrium of a particle, All right? Any more questions about this example? Can we move to the second example? Huh? It's fine? Yeah? Uh, I don't know. You, you need to check in Ebler's book. Maybe I, I can bring it in the afternoon, okay? Yeah. So what, what you can do is you can solve this system uh, at lunchtime. I'm giving you a good program for lunch. And then in the afternoon, I can bring the solution to see if you have the same result, all right? Okay. Now... Let's focus on this second example here. Uh, so why, why did I decide to choose this second example? So the problem is, again, equilibrium of a particle. But this is a, in three dimensions. And the main objective of this example is to show you an easy way, in my opinion, to represent the force vectors in 3D. Because if you try to represent force vectors by checking the angle these cables make with the x, y, and z coordinate axis, and then multiply by the cosine of this angle, you will miss, you will make a mistake for sure. All right? So I think there is a much better way of getting the force vectors for these 3D problems, and that is the main objective of this example. All right? So the question for this was basically to get the forces in the cables. OK? So this was basically the question. Again, this example was taken from Ebler. Ebler statics, because he, he has a, also a dynamics version, which is for your turn two. Uh, so the idea is, again, to, to, to get the forces in the cables. So what we are going, what the first step you need to do in all these examples, all of them, you are going to learn in this term, is always the construction of the free body diagram, okay? So we will, again, focus on the construction of the free body diagram. Even in your exam, I will ask you explicitly to draw the free body diagram, okay? So this is something I don't want you to ignore because if you, in, in this kind of problems, if you miss any force in your, in your diagram, then at the end your problem is all wrong, isn't it? So that's why the free body diagram is, is extremely important to be done first because then you 
by doing the free body diagram, you should not miss any force in, in, in your representation. Okay? So, again, what we are going to do is, I'm going, imagine I have a scissor, I'm going to isolate point A, so I'm going to cut all these cables, I'm going to cut all these cables and isolate point A, all right? And then at the end, I will have my point A here. This is my point A. And now, I need to represent all the forces in this point A. So I need to see what I was cutting, which cables I was cutting, and then replace those cables with the force of the cable, right? So, let's start with these 600 Newtons here. I need to represent these 600 Newtons in my particle A, okay? Then I am cutting cable B, right? So I need to have a force that I will call force FAB, okay? Which this force FAB needs to, needs to have the same direction of my cable AB. I'm also cutting my cable AC, so I need to represent a force FAC, right? With the direction of cable AC, and I am cutting my cable AD. And this is going to be my force FAD. And that's all the forces I have at point A. Yes? That X, Y, and Z are the coordinate axis. All right? So, which you need to represent in your free body diagram as well. So, this is going to be our X axis. Right? So, I'm representing here in green. This is going to be our Z axis. And this is going to be our y axis okay and yeah now our free body diagram is complete the only thing we need to do now is write the equilibrium equations summation of forces equal to zero right for a particle that's the only equilibrium equations we have summation of forces equal to zero and then i need to add all these force vectors <coughs> along the x, y, and z directions, right? And then at the end, we will have one equilibrium equation for the forces in the x direction, equal to zero. Second equilibrium equation is summation of forces in the y direction, equal to zero. Third equilibrium equation is summation of forces in the z direction, equal to zero. Then we will have three equations, three equations for three unknowns, which are Force FAC, the magnitude, the magnitude of force FAC, the magnitude of force FAD, and the magnitude of force FAB. So three unknowns, which are these three magnitudes, for three equilibrium equations, problem <coughs> solved, right? So the only thing we need to do now, basically, to, to, to solve this example is to write these force vectors. And for that, I'm going to um, to show you uh, one scheme that you can use for that I'm just going to copy this here a scheme which I think is very convenient especially for 3D because uh, we are going to learn the method of joints uh, maybe in week 6 or 7 something like that and the method of joints is very good for uh, the analysis of trusses. And everything is in 3D, right? So we have struts with uh, 3D orientations. And this kind of thing I'm going to tell you now to get the force vectors are very convenient for the method of joints. So what is going to be the procedure we are going to use to calculate the force vectors? So the procedure is this one, a force vector can be represented something like this, by the norm, by its norm, multiplied by its direction. So this lambda 
is a unit length vector. We talked about this last week, remember? So the norm of lambda is going to be equal to 1. So this lambda basically will give me the direction of my force vector. And the norm will give me the magnitude or intensity, right? So when I multiply these two, so when I multiply a magnitude by a unit length vector, I still have the magnitude of my force vector, right? I'm, when I multiply something by 1, right? Imagine I multiply 100 newtons by 1. At the end, I still have 100 newtons, isn't it? So that's why you need to have here a unit length vector so that you don't change the magnitude of your force. So this is uh, the way we are going to, to build the force vectors. So we need to get a magnitude and we need to get a unit vector which will give me the direction of my force vector. And for this case, when we, when we have cables, like in this example, we know already that the force vectors, they need to have the direction of the cables. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to start with this force FAD that I, I represented now, this, this vector connecting point A to point D. And I'm going to represent this vector AD, a kind of a position vector, OK? So this vector AD basically is going to be equal to the position of point D minus the position of point A. You all agree with me? So, how can I, how can I write the, for example, the x component of my vector AD? What do you think? So I want the, the component along the x direction, along this direction, of my vector AD. How much do you think it is? First, is positive or negative? Sorry? Negative. Or positive? Sorry. Why negative? So look at this. Point A. So the, the x component is going to be this one, isn't it? This one has the same direction of x or has opposite direction of x? Same direction, right? So it should be positive, right? And now how much is that this component, how much is the length of this component in the x direction? One. 1, right? So my x component is going to be equal to 1. You all agree with this? Now, do the same analysis for the y direction. Now, the y direction, the component of this vector in the y direction is going to be this 1. You all agree? Should be positive or negative? Negative. negative. Is opposite direction of my y-axis. How much is the value? Two, so minus two is the y component. You see, it's not difficult, isn't it? <coughs> now the z component, z component is going to be this component here, right? Right? It's like if you are projecting this vector along the z axis. So you you get this component here, right? So it's going to be positive and equal to two, right? Very easy, isn't it? So this vector that we just represented now here, this vector AD, will give me, in fact, the direction of my force FAD. But there is a problem. This is not a unit vector. So if I put this vector AD here in place of this lambda, the problem is that I'm going to distort the magnitude of my force vector FAD. And I, I don't want to do that. right? So I need to make this vector a unit vector. <coughs> How do you make this vector AD a unit vector? <coughs> yeah. Divide by his model or divide by his norm, right? Same thing. Very good. So we need to calculate the norm. <coughs> I'm going to delete this. I need some space. So we need to calculate the norm of AD, which is the square root of x component square. plus y component square plus my z component square. 
So this is going to be 1 plus 4 plus 4, so it's 9. Square root of 9, which is equal to 3. Is this correct? Square root of 9 is 3. And now I can say that my vector, sorry, that my unit vector lambda, AD, I can write this way. Now I'm going to get the unit vector. Is going to be equal to my vector AD divided by its norm, like you said, right? So basically, I need to I need to divide this vector here by uh, component by component. I need to divide them by three, all right? So I will get. I can write like this, 1 over 3 times the, my vector AD. This is going to be equal to, sorry, 1 third minus 2 thirds and 2 thirds. OK? This now is a unit vector. This lambda AD is a unit vector that will give me the direction of my force FAD. I'm going to copy this. If we go back now, if we go back to this example here, I'm going to shrink this a little bit. OK, now I can say something like this. Summation of forces needs to be equal to zero, OK? So this is the equilibrium equation for a particle. And I'm going to start with my 600 Newton's force, this one. Yes? Sorry? Why is it equal to a third unit vector? Yeah, uh, look, this is our vector AD, right? We are now dividing this vector AD by its norm. And this norm is 3. Oh, why is this norm? Oh, we can check that. Let's check the norm of lambda AD. This needs to be equal to 1, right? Agree with me? So this norm is square root 1 over 3 square plus minus 2 over 3 square plus 2 over 3 square. So this is equal to square root of 1 over 9. 1 plus 4 plus 4. This is equal to square root of 1 equal to 1. Right? So as you can see, the result of our unit, when we basically divide vector AD by its norm, we are in fact obtaining a unit length vector this lambda AD, right? So your question is, why is this 1 over 3 and minus 2 over 3, 3 2 over 3? Because you are dividing every component of this AD vector by norm 3, by 3, right? So you get here 1 over 3, minus 2 over 3, 2 over 3, right? OK, so starting with this one, 600 newtons, sorry, this one here, 600 newtons. How can I represent this vector? Does it have any component in the x direction? No. So zero in the x direction. Does it have any component in the y direction? No. Does it have any component in the z direction? How much is it? 600 or minus 600? Minus 600, very good. Now, we can write this vector FAD. We define the orientation. So I can say this vector FAD is going to be equal to its norm, which is FAD, times its unit vector, this lambda AD that we calculated before, which is 1 over 3 minus 2 over 3 and 2 over 3. 
You all agree with this or not? So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm multiplying the magnitude with a unit vector that will give me the direction of my force FAD. And then at the end, I have my vector FAD completely defined. OK? We need to do the same now for vectors FAC and FAB. So we can speed up a little bit more now. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to delete all of this and its space. Let's define now, well, in fact, in fact, I can do, okay, let's do FAC because FAC is very easy. FAC is very easy. What? What do you think the vector FAC should be? X component. So basically, FAC is a vector aligned with my X axis. You agree with me? So it means the Y and Z component needs to be equal to 0. You agree? So I can say Y component 0, Z component 0. Let's look only now at the X component. Should be first. First question is, should be positive or negative, the X component? Negative. And equal to what? FAC, right? We don't know how much is FAC. So FAC is the norm or the magnitude of my vector FAC. So that's it. My vector FAC is defined like this, right? You all agree? And we need to define last one. FAB. So let's define FAB. FAB, in fact, we can use this angle 30 uh, because we know that this vector AB is uh, in XY plane. So the Z component is equal to 0. So we can say the Z component is equal to 0 immediately. And now we know that, so if we look at the X if we look at the x direction, so this vector AB will have this component in the x direction. You agree? Which is? B, uh, B sine 30. B sin 30, yeah. It's very good, it's sine 30. But the problem is this B. So don't forget we are looking, we are looking for in fact, I can write a little bit more better. I can move this. So what we are looking for is we are multiplying FAB, which is the magnitude, by a unit vector, right? That will give me the direction of AB. So what we should do, in fact, is not something like this, but we need, we need to imagine that we have here this vector in red that is a unit length vector. So the norm of this vector... I can write like this, the norm equal to 1. Okay, let's say this is lambda. This is a unit vector that will give me the direction of AB. And now, like you said, we, in order to get the x component, I need to project this unit vector along the x direction. And that projection is 1 times sine of 30 degrees, right? So what I can do is sine 30 degrees, right? This gives me the uh, component in the x direction. And now for the component in the y, direc uh, y direction, I need to project my unit vector in this direction. And that now is going to be what? Cosine, yeah, cos of 30 degrees. Right? <clears throat> look, if you, if you look at this vector, if you calculate the norm, you'll get what? Square root of sine square 30 plus cosine square 30, which is equal to 1. Isn't it? Yeah. 
Sorry, can you speak a bit yes. louder? Oh, this two, no, this two is for this length. Is not for, is not for this length. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Sir, can you repeat again? Okay. Oh, FAB, this is not a unit vector. This is the norm. This is magnitude. We need, okay. I said before that a, a force vector is defined by its magnitude times its direction. And this should be a unit, this guy should be a unit length vector that gives you only the direction. And this is the magnitude, right? So that's exactly what you have here. This FAB is the magnitude of your FAB force. And so this vector here should give you the direction only. So the norm of this vector should be equal to 1. So I, I was just confirming, checking, if the norm is equal to 1. Right? That's all I did. That's it. All right. So, so I show you here some different ways of defining, look, different ways of defining vectors in 3D. This is this first this first approach here is the one I strongly recommend if you have a 3D problem go for this so define first the vector connecting two points like we did for point A and D you get that vector then normalize this vector or divide this vector by its norm to get the unit vector and then you just multiply that unit vector by the magnitude of the force. If you know that magnitude, if you don't know, like we don't know here, you just put FAD. That's it. Okay? Why is this convenient? Because now we are going to say, so we have all the forces now, right? Now I'm going to say that in order for this summation of all these forces to be in equilibrium, this summation needs to be equal to zero. And because these are vectors, I need to write this way, right? In order for a vector to be equal to zero, its x component needs to be equal to zero, its y component needs to be equal to zero, and its z component also needs to be equal to zero. And then from this, now it's quite trivial now to get the equilibrium equations. Look at this. If I look only at the x components of these vectors, I get my first equation. I get what? I get 0 plus 1 over 3 FAD minus FAC plus FAB sine of 30 equal to 0. Right? This is my first equilibrium equation that comes from considering the summation of all the components along my z x direction. If I look now at my y direction, this one in blue, right? I need to say 0 minus 2 thirds FAD plus 0 plus FAB cosine of 30 degrees needs to be equal to 0. So I have my second equation and my last equation is going to be the z components. So this one in black, I get what? Minus 600 plus 2 thirds FAD plus 0 plus 0 equal to 0. That's it. Three equations for three unknowns, which are FAD. Uh, FAC and FAB. Three unknowns for three equations. I just need to solve this system of equations to get my final solution for this problem. All right? Okay? You see how it works? Any questions? Yes? 
Yeah, I can bring in the afternoon as well. Oh, basically, I just today in the morning, I just went to Weber, I get these two examples, that's it. But the solution, I hope, is in Weber because I think... With the working out? No, no, uh, from the proposal the examples. Well, you have to work out here. <laughs> right? Okay, so I propose the following, yeah. Uh, excuse me, I, I cannot hear your colleagues. Just one, one more minute, okay? We will do a break now, okay? Yeah, you can do the same. You can do like that. But what I, what I was telling you is that when you have a 3D problem, when you have force vectors in space, so you, might, you need to decompose these vectors in the coordinate axis, right? If you know the angles this vector does with the coordinate axis, you can just project by doing the cosine, multiplying by the cosine of those angles. But usually we don't know that. What we know is more like you have here. Sorry. What you know is more something more like this, for example, that you have a, a, a cable or a strut or a beam that is uh, oriented, is connecting to points, and then you have this uh, X, uh, Y, and Z components of this uh, vector connecting these two points, right? So, look, you can, you can, for this example, do like we did uh, on the first example, by doing what? By checking the angle. So you need to get this angle, you need to get the angle with the y direction, and you need to get the angle with the z direction, right? And then you just uh, multiply by cosine of these angles to get the components in the coordinate axis. But the problem is, to get these angles might not be a, an easy task. And my experience is that when you try to do this, you always have mistakes in these angles. <laughs> 